Hello everyone and welcome back to AMOS, our course on Agile methods and open source, where student teams develop open source software based on industry requirements. This session is about team and tools. It's our second session, it's still the first class day. We will talk or I will talk about the different deliverables uh, of the AMOS project as student teams have to provide them basically as homework along the timeline of the project. So in Scrum, which is our development method, um, student teams consist of nine students usually. It will be or it is six software developers, two product owners and one Scrum master. These are the three key roles of a Scrum team, the so-called committed roles. And this is how Scrum teams are uh, built and hopefully if everything works well, this is a stable team over the course of the three months of an Amos project. A product owner in Scrum has the overall responsibility that effectively the software is valuable to customers which typically means that they need to understand customer requirements and uh, turn them into feature requests and a product backlog and so forth. But it's important to take the high level perspective. It's about business value in an industry setting, why you are paid to do your job. And so it's not about the implementation details. It's about uh, making sure that customers get what they're asking for. While product owners take care of requirements, software developers implement the software based on the incoming requirements. So software developers are architects, engineers, testers, different roles within the software developer role, and they make sure that there's actually working software uh, all the time and certainly at the end. A Scrum Master is a person who is responsible for ensuring that the team keeps learning, keeps improving its performance. So this is about removing impediments, so-called impediments, and making sure that there's continuous uh, process improvement. There are additional roles. Um, most notably, we require that student teams define a release manager. The three committed scrum roles are statically assigned. You already know as a student, you already know what your role is coming into the project. You also have to define who is responsible of the weekly sprint release. So scrum proceeds in time boxes of defined length, which called sprints, and we choose in the Amos project a one week sprint length duration. So every week there needs to be a software release, some working software, some progress towards achieving the project goals. And in order to have that software ready for the release and for review, more importantly, we require that each student team for each sprint has a release manager whose responsibility it is. It's very important whose responsibility it is that there is a working software that can be demoed and inspected. Because Scrum or Agile methods in general are about show and tell, not just talk. Show running code and not just talk about it. It's noteworthy that Scrum project teams or Agile project teams in general are supposed to be self-organizing, meaning there's no big boss. There is no project manager and uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't people who take more of a coordination role, but whoever it is has or can only assume that role with the agreement of the team. So as you delegate responsibilities or as you assign responsibilities, it needs to be a consensus building process. And then you can have someone who takes care more of the mundane project management activities. Often it's a product owner, it could also be a scrum master, but that would not be that great. Uh, it could be a software developer, uh, typically a product owner steps up for this task. But again, 
only if the team agrees. At this stage, I hope you already had an industry partner meeting to learn about requirements even before the first class day, because I usually introduce you to your industry partners before the course starts. But if not, make sure that you have it as soon as possible, meaning right now, this week, the latest. It's quite important that you hit the, road hit the ground running, that you're serious about the project, and you need to learn about requirements as soon as possible. Because the industry partners are often also the people who actually understand the domain, not just requirements specifically, but really the domain. There's a lot to be learned about domain, Fachlichkeit in German, um, and they are your go-to partner for that. Um, it's actually a good idea if as many people from the team are present, not just the product owners. So software developers should join, ask questions about how does this domain work? How do we do this in automotive? How does this work in financial services? And so forth. Your industry partner is not only where you learn specifically requirements, but what it all means. To understand the interactions, you will not be able to develop good software based on a thin stream of written requirements in some product backlog. You need to understand the domain. So go there, ask domain questions, if necessary, ask technical questions as there are sometimes technical requirements and so forth. These meetings with the industry partner should take place regularly. You need to keep receiving requirements. You will not understand the requirements right in the first meeting. You will need new requirements. The industry partner will change their opinion as they see your progress. They will reprioritize or they will dismiss past requirements. That's agile. That's business as usual. And again, as many should meet the industry partner and learn from them as is possible. How to have that meeting, we don't tell you. You have to organize that yourself. We only require presence in the lecture and in the team meeting on team meeting day. The team meeting on team meeting day is for the team to get its work done, as we will explain in the next class session. And it's not to meet the industry partner. The industry partner meeting has to be outside of these two meetings. All right, so let's go over the most important deliverables uh, at this stage. Some are one-time deliverables, you've got to do it only once, and some are regular deliverables, you have to do it every week, basically in traditional university terms, your homework. The team contract. So the team contract is an agreement, a contract and quotation marks between the team members, your team members of your team, on how you want to go about the project, how you want to work with each other. You're self-organizing, you're a self-organizing team. You choose how you can work with each other within the limits that we set you through Scrum and Agile methods. So within that team contract, you should write down in some online uh, document the goals of what you want to achieve and how you reward yourself if you achieve your goals. And the norms of how you want to behave, what is considered good behavior, and also then the sanctions if people misbehave, if they violate the team contract. Here are some examples of uh, goals um, you might have as a goal to learn what I'm teaching, to learn Scrum, understand the course material may sound benign and obvious, but that's a proper goal. Write that down if that's your objective. You may want to have goals of um, good relationships in a working team. You, know, you don't want to spend your time being miserable. You want to learn with others. You like to collaborate on learning and you feel that you're learning more if others are also attentive, respect each other and help each other. If that's your objective, then put that down as well. Of course, you may also have functional objectives like getting a good grade, to have efficient team meetings and so forth. Uh, you don't have to write that down, but if you feel that this is super important, then you should be discussing it and possibly write it down. Well, re rewards I leave up to you. Generally, there are no, uh, this is a creative endeavor. You can have cake or do whatever you like. 
a bit more contentious often are norms. What is good behavior? Um, you will find in the homework document a template on for a team contract which walks you through these different potential sections. Here are some uh, meeting norms, working norms, coordination norms, communication norms um, about proper behavior. Very common question, what if someone, what, 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 is it acceptable to be late to a team meeting? And then of course, usually it's not because that's most will consider this not respectful of the other people's time. If someone's consistently late or let's say three times late, what to do about it? Is there a sanction? And you need to write that down. So figure out, do you want to be on time? Do you require that? Um, and so forth. In terms of sanctions, you can also be creative. It doesn't mean you have to pay money or something. Um, people have come up with ideas like singing a song to the team, or if you're a really bad singer or prefer to do it, do 10 push-ups or die trying. Uh, that's up to you. you know, find something that's ideally a little bit shameful because, well, you are really not happy that your norms are being violated, but obviously also um, keep it reasonable. This is all written down in the team contract, which is part of the planning documents. All the links are available through the homework, uh, homework document. The team contract is a deliverable of the first week, but I do recommend that you finish the team contract already in the first team meeting, meaning on the first day of the first uh, week. Another thing to do is to come up with a team logo. Well, it's a logo that represents your, both your team and your project. And it has multiple uses, so it actually would be great if it's nice, not just an afterthought. Um, it will be printed on a team t-shirt for you. You will want to put it into the GitHub documentation. It will be visible in your final demo and report and wherever you want to use it. It's your logo. Make good use of it. Find a, create a good one and make good use of it. The key here is that you need to discuss your project and your team and find a logo that somehow represents that. So that is actually a collaborative activity. Like the team contract, everyone has to be engaged, should be engaged. Don't just delegate it. Think about it, contribute to it, and hopefully by yourself or if necessary with the help of your scrum master have a constructive well-working discussion and collaboration with this particular result it's a team building practice so get started maybe during the first team meeting i think that next to the team contract you can already sketch out the team logo during the team meeting. You don't have to do the graphics details during the team meeting. Those can be delegated to one person, but the meaning, the content of the team logo should be found collaboratively and should be agreed upon so that nobody feels left out. You submit it. You also submit uh, how you would like to see your logo on a team t-shirt. So we will print that team t-shirt and send you uh, one. If you don't want a team t-shirt, because maybe you think this is wasteful, then uh, do not put in a request for a team t-shirt. That is completely, completely okay too. Um, we would love to see a team photo at the end, so you will probably then have to wear a plain white or plain black t-shirt. The team t-shirt will ask for preferences, color, size, form. The survey where we ask for the specific student information will explain that. So create your team logo, put it onto a t-shirt design and submit your preferences for your t-shirt none if you don't want a t-shirt also within the first week or at the end after one week the team contract and the team logo and team t-shirt are one-time deliverables 
Every week now, you have regular deliverables. And these are for the product owners, mostly the planning documents and for the developers, of course, the architecture and code. So the planning document is a basic spreadsheet for tracking fundamental information about the project. Most of the project coordination takes place on GitHub, but there are some things that don't easily fit into GitHub. So we have that separate spreadsheet to collect everything else that's not on GitHub in one single place. As you can look at the slides, you can get an example here and also get the main copy in your project folder, which I have already shared with you. The planning documents may look overwhelming, but it really is not so bad. It's got these 13 tabs right now. Most of these tabs get filled in once, like project data, team, role assignments, the team contract and so forth. That's all stuff that gets done once in the beginning. And then there are a few tabs that keep evolving up, being built out. Uh, as the project evolves, that's the glossary, the sprint goals, the release tracking and so forth. These different parts will be explained in different uh, class sessions as you learn more, as students learn more about uh, Scrum and Agile methods. For now, just fill in the project data, who is your team, what's your GitHub ID, etc, etc. In there, should be a link to your online team meeting. We need that link to find you. We participate in your team meeting, so we will also be there. So do not hide the Zoom link or whatever you use. Do not hide your team meeting and also don't protect it. Make it uh, open so that we can join. Uh, different people from my uh, professorship will join you over time, so don't expect always the same person to be there. Under project team, provide your name and GitHub ID. Use only one GitHub ID. Please do not change your GitHub IDs. During the semester, use one GitHub ID. You're making our life harder if you switch your identities all the time, or even twice, <laughs> or even once. Fill in the roles. So these roles, most of them, the Scrum roles, the committed Scrum roles, uh, product owner, software developer, Scrum master, they are static. They have been assigned, so they are fixed now. But the release manager role needs to be defined. I recommend that you do this also during the first team meeting today on first class day. You uh, allocate who is the release manager for a given sprint. That person is responsible to make sure that working software is available in the team meeting um, when the potential, when the software gets reviewed and a potential sprint release is cut. Don't do this week by week. Do it once in the beginning. Just distribute the task and then make sure that people do it. So if you don't have a GitHub ID yet, then create one and provide it here. I trust you have one already. On GitHub, you will also already have found your GitHub code repository and those of who we had a GitHub ID have been invited to work on that code repository. That's where the project work takes place. The deliverables, your homework, is also uploaded there. So you're committed to the deliverables folder on your GitHub code repository. You don't send it to us by email. You don't submit it through the course management system. You commit it to the deliverables folder in a sprint, meaning week specific subfolder. The details can be found in the homework instructions and your scrum master knows all about it. So set up your planning document as just discussed and also uh, and keep it up to date and then every week uh, committed as part of the deliverables. As we talk about, as we since we use GitHub, we need to make sure that there are no misunderstandings. Sadly, for reasons that are beyond me, GitHub is a veritable terminology mess. They basically turned everything around. 
So in Amos, the overall project, like in Agile, what's called a project maps to a repository on GitHub. The backlogs in Agile and Amos, the product backlog, the sprint backlog, etc., they are columns in what GitHub calls a project. Um, I don't know why it's called a project, but what um, what the GitHub project really is, is effectively some sort of Kanban board. We call it in Amos the feature board, where the um, features, the requirements are put first into a product backlog, a column on the feature board or on the GitHub project, and then make its way through the uh, process of being fulfilled. A specific requirement could be a backlog item that's just called item or issue, etc. A code repository is really just the code on GitHub inside a GitHub repository. People sometimes use terms that we do not use, like rock item or ticket. Um, that's yet another tool with questionable naming. Jira, most notably, gave that to us. So please don't use those words. Use the Amos terminology, use the Agile terminology. Agile Scrum terminology and Amos are basically the same. I will now walk through uh, that um, in some more detail. So the feature board is on GitHub, a project uh, for your team. And I'm simplifying here, but a feature board is basically a slotting system, so multiple columns next to each other, where each column represents the processing state of work that needs doing, called backlog item in, in Scrum. The types of slots, the work states, are the different columns, are the product are called the product backlog, the sprint backlog, in progress, awaiting review, and feature archive. Top to bottom, uh, left to right in terms of columns. Um, these are the stages or steps of fulfilling one particular backlog item like a feature request. You can see it here. Um, this is an illustration still, a screenshot will follow. To the left, meaning at the beginning of the process, you have the product backlog, which provides a long list of features, functionality, requirement to be implemented. When it's time for implementing it, a particular feature request is moved into the sprint backlog, meaning it's ready now for being worked upon. If someone picks it up and works upon it, it goes into the in progress column, meaning someone works on it now. Ideally, you'd say in the backlog item who it is who is working on it. When it's finished, at least in the eyes of the person developing it, it goes into a waiting review. And then if it passes review in the team meeting, meaning the team considers or the product owner considers the feature or the backlog item completed, it goes into feature archive. It will, if it was not completed within the time box, the sprint, it goes back to the product backlog to be picked up in the next sprint. So here's how a screenshot from GitHub looks like. It's identical, except that this is a screenshot. So we have a product backlog, a sprint backlog, the in-progress column, the waiting review, and the feature archive where completed functionality keeps, uh, keeps piling up. You can see here the name of the backlog item, the uh, size, the estimated size, and once it's in review or has been archived, the real size in terms of something called story points. We will explain story points later as well. So again, what you move through these columns or slots in the uh, feature board are called backlog items. That's actually a general term um, for something that needs doing. And there are three main types of backlog items in Scrum. There are features, refactorings, and bug fixes. Features is why we are here. These are functional and or non-functional user requirements. 
And so you describe in a backlog item a feature, a desired feature or requirement that needs to be implemented. In addition, you can also have backlog items that describe refactorings, cleanup of code, so-called behavior preserving code transformations, um, cleanup of code to make things more readable that does not uh, does not introduce new functionality. So it's just rearranging things, but to make it more maintainable. Of course, there can or there will be bugs, problems, uh, malfunctioning software. So there's a major bug that you found. You can also create a backlog item for it and hence uh, have, an, have a backlog item for fixing a particular uh, bug. Now, I'm jumping ahead, but uh, there are many teachers or well consultants of Scrum who will tell you that refactorings and bug fixes should not go into the product backlog. And I try to establish that in Amos, it's a lost cause because students want to see all work for good reason being reflected. So if a refactoring and a bug fix is a major piece of work, then you want to channel that as a backlog item through the product, uh, through the feature board. The idea in Scrum originally is that this happens on the side. You never let quality slide so low that a refactoring or a bug fix becomes a major issue. Um, but that's not the reality of uh, student projects. Uh, refactorings and bug fixes can be major work. so make it explicit as backlog items. So here is a feature in user story format, a backlog item in user story format. Um, of, um, and I will explain this format, but it's basically called a sentence template. As a person in a particular role, I want something, that's the business, that's, that's what I need, the requirement and uh, for some reason that's the business value. In addition to that sentence template, you need to have so-called acceptance criteria, a checklist basically to see whether this specific um, feature request was properly implemented. So that's uh, manual testing instructions that also elaborate the desired feature. Later in this course, we will also introduce uh, feature independent across all features, so-called definition of done, quality criteria that apply to all uh, features, not just like acceptance criteria to the specific feature at hand. You should create a template. Um, there are some in our template projects on GitHub, create a template for feature requests um, and uh, use that. Here are the minimum requirements Maybe you just want to clone our, um, our template. But here are the minimum requirements. Uh, needs to have a short name, a short description using a user story format, acceptance criteria, and later on a definition of done. You should add labels for the size of the feature as you are going into implementing them. There's the initial estimated size um, and you set that during sprint planning, as we will explain in the next class session. There's also the uh, real size, which you will only know after you finished the uh, implementation. And you should set this then. And the product owners need to make sure that there is a known real size because you will need it for planning. I recommend that you not only create these tags, but you use colors ideally on an escalating color scale uh, that relates to the size. So different sizes have different colors. Here you can see another screenshot of, um, of, a, of a feature board with the different columns. What you should do is if you have multiple people working on it or multiple people want to work on a feature, then you can use GitHub's assignees feature to mark here that two people are working on it. For example, their pair programming. 
So that feature board, in addition to the planning documents, is the second main deliverable for the product owner. Please initialize your feature board in the beginning of the uh, project and then keep it up to date from week to week. For the product owners, that's the main place of work. You want to have good requirements, good feature requests in the product backlog column. And uh, for that, you need to meet with your industry partner. So meet your industry partner as soon as possible. On to the software developer role. So software development obviously takes place in the GitHub uh, code repository for the project that I probably assign most, if not all of you now already to. And you need to get set up. So have your GitHub user um, and a corresponding Git user on GitHub. That's great with that. Use one account, please use one account. Don't switch accounts. We can track it, but you're really making our life miserable and we will not be happy about it. Use one account with one email address. We don't want to be chasing down multiple accounts and we don't want to be chasing down 15 different email addresses. It actually happens easily that you don't configure your system right. Watch out the different email addresses you use. Use one. One way of ensuring that things work is if you work from a, a command line to set username and email properly. So here's an example of what you should do. Set your git config to username and email properly. Please do that. Also sign off um, on your commits. Um, so any commit will have your name and email address as attached to it. Um, we can do some fixing if you fail to properly use GitHub IDs and Git IDs, but uh, you make our life easier if you sign off and we want to see that sign off. It's just proper professional behavior. Now, some of you may want to be pair programming, which is considered a good development practice by many, so it's fine with us. If you're pair programming, you agree to be graded jointly for that for any resulting commits. Yeah? Please understand that you're, it's your decision that both of you need to decide that uh, you want to be graded jointly. You can mark collaboration in the feature board, but it's not sufficient. You absolutely need to mark pair programming in your commits as well. And for that, you need to add the co-authored by part to a commit message using the proper email address that identifies you. You can probably see the trouble miles away uh, when I, uh, if you use different email addresses. Um, so use the one and only your correct email address. Here is how it looks like as an example. Um, add co-authored by and uh, in the commit message. Again, declaring collaboration in the feature board for software developers is not enough. We need to see it in the commit messages using the co-authored by annotation. As you noticed, the uh, project, and that's a requirement, is an open source project under the MIT license. So it's a permissive open source license that makes it easy for everyone to use your code, including your industry partner, and it makes the world a better place. For all data that is not software code, uh, we use the Creative Commons by 4.0 license. So if you have data, in your repo repository that isn't code. Um, so if something in your repository that isn't code, like data or images or something, um, and it's your work, then please license it or declare the license to be the Creative Commons by 4.0 license. In your code, not just on the root folder of your project, but in your code in every file, you should also mark the files with the correct license and correct copyright. For that, please use the reuse software 
uh, format, which is basically just a, a tag or a key value pair in the code for your files at the in the file header um, called SPDX license identifier colon MIT because we use the MIT license and then SPDX file copyright text so and so um, use your name or use by the authors. Since uh, people want to use uh, your code, in particular, certainly the industry partner who is spending that time with us for us to make sure that this is as realistic a software development project as can be. Uh, they have an expectation of being able to use the software, which means not only that your code is under an MIT license, but that also all libraries you use all the code dependencies you introduce are also permissively licensed, meaning also under MIT or similar, similarly compatible licenses. Meaning you cannot and should not use any copyleft license. So no GPL, no AGPL, etc. Um, please don't try to play tricks on your industry partner. Uh, they are professionals, they have tools that will analyze whatever licenses are in the code and it's a requirement that the whole code base, including dependencies, is permissively licensed. And finally, on after product owner and software developer to the Scrum Master or more general to impediments and improvements. The main board or GitHub project, meaning the Kanban board, is the feature board for the product owner. But the Scrum Master has a separate, well, it's always for the team, but there's somehow usually a person most strongly associated with it, who does most of the moving. Then in addition to the feature board, there's something that we call the M squared backlog, which is a place where a Scrum Master tracks any impediments to progress and any desired improvements and how we work towards improving the team's performance is going. Because it's a GitHub project, it's another slotting system, another Kanban board, this time simpler than the feature board. Um, where basically the Scrum Master, based on the weekly retrospective, the sprint retrospective, takes note of things that are not working, that needs improvement and so forth. So here you can see it. Um, it is stuff that it needs, that they need to do, that's in progress and that's done. That's the most basic Kanban board you can have. Um, stuff that needs doing, that is being done and that was finished. And that's the impediments and improvements uh, or imp squared backlog. The Scrum Master has to submit that like the product owner or the team has to submit the feature board into the, into the deliverables folder. S team coordination. So you should probably set up a communication mechanism of your own. We can offer you a Slack, but uh, you choose yours. We don't want to see it. But we do require a minimum of demonstrated communication, and that would be the stand-up emails. Stand-up emails is what you send through a specific tool that I'll show you in a second. It's updates about your work. In a stand-up email, you communicate what did you do since the last stand-up email, what are you going to do next, so what work is coming up, and what are the problems you're facing. So that's actually a classic retrospective. Uh, so you're at some state, you reflect on what you did, what you're going to do, and what problems to expect. These stand-up emails are entered through the happiness index tool, or the, a specific tool at this URL happy-amos.appspot.com and you're expected to at least twice in a given sprint in a given week to write these stand-up emails different days and 
you just type into these three sections what you did, what you're going to do and what problems there are. It's sent out by email to the team which signed up on this tool and we receive it as well. I read it, I want to know how you are doing. The happiness index tool is a tool that has two functions. Uh, to write stand-up emails, just explained, and also to tell us how you feel about the project. You may be happy, you may be unhappy. It's a project, sometimes things go wrong, some other person is really annoying you, or you're unhappy because you can't get your work done, you realize that you have to work harder. Whatever it is, in the happiness index, the other part of the happiness tool, you, on a weekly basis, on a sprint basis during the retrospective, tell us how you feel in a very basic way. Yeah, so it's plus three to minus three, very happy to very unhappy, with zero being neutral. It's just one click. And um, it's a timeline that results so you can see how over time happiness changed of the whole team. You don't see who is unhappy, you only see these timelines and this timeline, so it's, uh, it's anonymous. But of course, if there's one person which is always unhappy down here at minus three, unhappy, 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 then obviously something needs to be done. You know, the scrum master may try, they don't know who it is, but may want to ask about maybe privately come to me, is there something we can do, etc. If someone's continuously unhappy, we also watch that, uh, we may come and ask how can we help make that person less unhappy. It's an indicator for potential problems ahead because they always show up early and get worse if not addressed. So during the sprint retrospective in a team meeting every week, you should enter this data so we know how you're doing. If you don't enter anything, we don't know how you're doing, please do it. Um, for the very first team meeting day, that is sprint zero, that's the sprint zero that ends, you should also on the very first team meeting day enter your happiness. Doesn't mean much yet, but get into the habit of providing your happiness. It's actually another agile best practice or another best practice, not specifically agile, originally called the emotion seismograph. So do that regularly, use the tool which has these two functions, stand-up email and happiness index, and do that in uh, do the happiness information, the happiness index every week. And that's it. So we talked about the basics, the uh, team, the initial uh, one-time deliverables with the team data, the team contract, team logo and team t-shirt and then the main recurring, meaning regular deliverables of the planning document, the feature board, the programming work and the process improvement, as well as the communication and coordination through the stand-up emails and the happiness index. That's it from me. I'm happy to take any questions. And since this is a video, probably see you next time in class. Bye, until then, goodbye.